I have the pleasure of introducing our next presenters, Patty Scott and Kim Brown of Neighbors in New Jersey. And they will help us see more clearly what practices are needed and growing within this organization that is clearly so committed to helping people expand their relationships and be part of their local neighborhoods. So many of us in this group certainly value community building, but while the rhetoric is being adopted widely, um, hmm, frankly, a few people are really digging deeper into what it means to actually do the work and to help people enter unknown spaces to discover new possibilities for belonging and contribution. So Patty Scott helps us understand the role of a CEO in an organization that is genuinely invested in finding new ways to do the work. And Patty embodies the wisdom and the courage to actually walk the talk. And a lot of this work is about walking. And Kim Brown brings her creative genius to life in her daily practice. I continue to learn so much from both these women and from the evolution of neighbors. And so Patty and Kim, I turn it over to you. We found even though our big focus in our work um, from the very beginning was on supporting people to have a life that was rich in community and relationships, we found over the past years, as I'm sure many of you have, that there's been all kinds of challenges that have been getting in the way. And I won't list all of them, but perhaps one of the biggest ones that was kind of pulling us off track was the move to fee for service and Medicaid billing in New Jersey and all of the compliance and documentation and system garbage that comes along with that. Um, so there was a group of us, we wanted to, we were struggling for some of the people we work for to really support them in a meaningful way. And some people life was going well for. Um, and the advisor team and our advisors, Kim is an advisor, those are the folks who partner with the person and their family and their friends and their staff team to help them figure out life through the course of, of their lifetime. And Sandy Cooper, who leads the advisor team, um, and Diamon Hargis and myself, and Diamon's with the Learning Tree and, and he's out of Indiana and, and he's just brilliant at this kind of stuff. We started thinking about how we could um, support this investment in the things that were the heart of, of our work. And we tried a whole bunch of different stuff. And I think the first thing I wanna say is um, a lot of stuff that we tried, particularly before Diamon got more involved in the conversation, um, were interesting prototypes that may have inspired conversation or given people new resources or um, gave everybody a nice night, but it didn't help us get unstuck where we were stuck. Um, but it was good because we learned something from all of the things we tried. And then around April uh, 2018, we decided to try a whole different thing. And all the things we tried were different things, but this different thing was that we were gonna focus, and this is based a lot on Demon's work, <clears throat> we're going to focus on walking around the neighborhoods where people live. And we're going to start with the advisors and Demon and I were going to start with an individual advisor in an individual person's neighborhood and walk around that neighborhood and not focus at all on what the outcomes could be for the people we work for, but instead really focus on helping that advisor build their own social capital in that particular neighborhood. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to take the advisor's focus off of the idea of what's the outcome going to be for the person and instead just try and find out what are the gifts in the neighborhood. And once we took that focus off the outcomes for the person and just opened the advisors up to building their own social capital, expanding their own connections, seeing what was interesting in the the neighborhood, they started to notice things that they weren't noticing when they were focused on thinking about outcomes for people. And so we would walk around with people. We'd spend uh, a day walking around neighborhoods, going into stores, uh, walking into people's backyards if they were out there and talking to them, stopping people on the street and just having conversation. And one of the things we noticed um, that seemed to work in this for us is 
when we asked people to come, the advisors and sometimes it'd be with people staff, they would come. I mean, I'm the CEO of the organizations. So if I asked them, they would come and, and Diamond's one of people's favorite guests. But they would look at us like we're we're asking them to do something really crazy, like, all right, I'll do this, but you know, this is the woman who's leading this organization. She's having me walk around, talk to people on the street. Um, but as they started doing it, and as they started meeting people, and as they started meeting people with us there to reflect on what we were learning uh, about who they were meeting, they started to understand it in a different way. And one of the things that became really clear to me is that this kind of walking and doing um, helped people to embody what we were trying to communicate previously in words. And there was something about embodying it inside themselves that made it a lot more clear to people. Um, so they, we'd be in a pickle shop and there is indeed a shop that sells only pickles in Hackettstown, New Jersey and spend 20 minutes talking to the owner who started it and his mother who works there about everything pickles and walked away with names and um, ideas of what they're interested in and, and things that we shared in common with them and the person who was walking with us walked out and was like, yeah, I understand this. I know what you're talking about now. You're not really as crazy as I thought you were when we started doing this. So that embodying is really important. Um, we do this every couple of months with people, but people do it while we're not there as well. And then after doing this for a couple of days, we come together as a full team of advisors and people share their stories and we reflect on what kind of learning we can have from the stories. And then the next piece of this and what's really important is that we've invested in helping people to prototype, come up with new ideas and, and try them. And we're really interested and invested in helping everybody to prototype. So not just the people we work for, but the people who work for them, their staff or the advisors. If they have an interesting idea that they wanna try in the community of the person they work for or in their own community, we're investing in that. And by investing, I mean creating time and space but I also mean giving people grants. If they wanna do something in their neighborhood that's gonna make their neighborhood better and they wanna try it out, we'll give them a grant to do that. And part of this is we wanna create this culture where every single person is valued and every single person's gift is valued. And everybody who works here and who we work for can bring their whole selves into the conversation. And we found it's, um, it's good not just for people, that we work for, but it's also good for their staff. So I'm gonna show you one quick example of this. Um, and the people I'm gonna show you are Legina, who's on the right, and she's one of the advisors, and Marilyn, who's on the left, and she's someone we work for. Marilyn loves art. Legina uh, is an entrepreneur um, when she's not doing her advisor job, and she runs a small salad making business or maybe it's not small, I don't know, but she makes awesome salads. Um, so anyway, their idea was that they wanted to do a sketch and salad night. And what we did was we gave uh, a grant where Legina had the money to create some wonderful salads and awesome food. Marilyn bought a whole bunch of art stuff. Marilyn's a bingo player. She lives in a big apartment complex. She knows people, Legina knows people. They both invited people. They came together, they did their sketch and salad. Um, people created art, different people created different types of art um, and the event was a success. And then they did another event. So it was a prototype that worked and it was an investment in both of their gifts and talents. And we try and do that as, as much and as often as we can. And we try, the pictures are because we try and capture the stories so that we can keep learning from the stories. Um, and then the final thing I wanna say is that it took about a year before doing this started to make sense for people. And it made sense because we kept practicing these things over time, the walking, the prototyping, the investing, the reflecting. And as we practiced them over time, um, we developed a pattern that became part of what we do in our work. So I think I've gone a little bit over. Um, Kim is going to just finish up our space here and then Kim is going to start when we get into our breakout session and you'll get to hear a lot more from Kim at that point. Kim? Okay. Yeah, and what I would add is that um, 
proto prototyping sounds like fun and trying new things sounds like fun, but it was very scary to try something new, to have someone invest in your idea and then you possibly fail. So we were so afraid. And I think that's where we got stuck was like, what if we fail? What if we didn't succeed? And Patty, the CEO of the company would say, you know, it's okay to fail. It's okay to fail. So we started to realize that there was um, in our culture and the fabric of our culture is this opportunity to learn from failing and that it's okay to fail, even if someone invests in you. So it was just a great thing. And it helped us to build our trust and trust in our vision, trust in our gifts and trust in prototyping. 